a PhD is not enough. Uh, once you get a PhD in the physical sciences, and I'm going to draw from my own experience here in physics and astronomy, it may be slightly different for other fields, but it's generally the same. Once you get a PhD, you are not considered ready to have a full faculty position, tenured professor, the whole deal. You enter into what's called a postdoc or a postdoctoral research position. This means it's a temporary position anywhere from two to five years long where you're separated from your advisor. You're kicked out of the nest. You're kicked out of your PhD granting institution. You go off into the world to really see what you're capable of on your own, what you can do outside of the nice cushy little nest provided by your thesis advisor. And typically, typically nowadays in modern physics, the way it's set up, you typically have to do two or even three of these short-term positions before you're considered ready for a faculty position. So I get the logic behind them. I totally get why we would want to make sure that a scientist that we're going to sink millions of dollars into to support on a faculty line in a research institution, we want to make sure that they're, uh, that they, that they have some longevity, that they have ideas of their own, that they can carry through without the support of their PhD institution. And that's why I have no problems at all with postdoc as a concept. But it used to be back uh, 20 years ago, 50 years ago, even 100 years ago when this postdoc system first started to develop, you would get your PhD and the competition to get a postdoc would be incredibly fierce. There were simply not a lot of postdoctoral positions available in the world. And that was okay because you know what, if you didn't make it, if you weren't good enough or you weren't w willing to move, that was just okay. That's how life is. Not everyone's going to get to be a research scientist. Not everyone's dreams get to come true. There's not enough money in the world. So that's totally fine. But there'd be this hard cut when you got your PhD and your PhD, you'd be in like, say your mid twenties by the time you got your PhD, mid to late ish twenties. Uh, and then there'd be a hard cut, either you're in or you're out. If you're in, you got a postdoc and you get to work as a postdoc. And then eventually there, you would get a faculty position. And there was generally a one-to-one -one match between the people who were currently postdocing and open faculty positions. So there was a hard jump. There weren't a lot of postdoc positions available, but then once you got a postdoc, you were pretty much on the academic track if you wanted to stay on there. There was a professorship position, maybe not at the most elite school or prestigious school or whatever. But there was this faculty position somewhere for you, somewhere out there in the world. And this system is, is kind of okay. But in the past couple decades, this has become distorted because there's not a lot of money in sciences, because funding for physics and astronomy has been on a flat or downward curve for about two or three decades now. There isn't a lot of money out there. There's not a lot of grant money, but what money is available. So, so there's no money for like decent permanent faculty positions. There's not a lot of money. There's not a lot more professors in the world than now than there were uh, 30 or 40 years ago. And combine that with the fact that there's a limited number of open faculty positions, but universities, colleges are going under undergoing a huge boom. There's tons of money, tons of people going into universities, getting college degrees, and that includes degrees in astronomy or physics. So there's a lot of people in the system at the lower levels, very restricted scene going on up in the upper levels at the faculty positions. And to make that gap, there have been increases in the number of postdoc positions, an increase in the number of these temporary two to five year jobs. So 
if you get a PhD and you want to go into the academic track and you start applying for postdoc positions, generally, I'm, this is very, very general, vague numbers. Generally, if you want a postdoc position, there's at least one out there for you may not be your best preference, it may not have a lot of money, maybe somewhere you don't want to live, but generally, if there, you have a PhD in physics or astronomy and you want a postdoc, generally there's one for you. So it's great, you're on the academic track, you're making it happen. You get to be a scientist for a few years and you do one postdoc and then you do another and then you do another. Then, faculty hiring committees for that rare opening position will finally consider you ready enough for a faculty position. And here, there's still a big jump. So it used to be there was a big jump between grad school and postdoc, but then once you were on that academic track, you could stay on that academic track. You knew you were gonna have a job in research science. Now, there's still that hard jump, there's still that hard cutoff but it happens much later in life. It doesn't happen when you get your PhD in your mid-20s. It happens after you've had a couple postdoc positions and you're in your mid-30s. And you've moved. You went to one university for your undergrad. You went somewhere else for grad school. You went somewhere else for your first postdoc, somewhere else for your second postdoc, maybe somewhere else for your third postdoc, and then you go somewhere else for your faculty position. So if you want, I don't know, a family, you want to buy a house, you want some sense of stability because now you're getting older, you're starting to go bald, you're, you're realizing that life is short and you might have some shifting priorities. Well, too bad because you don't get to find out if you're gonna stay on the research track until you're in your mid thirties. And that's why I don't like about the current system. I'm okay with there being hard cutoffs. I'm okay with there being stringent criteria for hiring faculty. I'm okay with there not being a lot of jobs because you know, it, there isn't a lot of money in physics and astronomy. I'm not okay with this decision point being made so late in people's lives where people are forced to make some really tough decisions about whether to start raising a family or buy a house or settle down or, or facing aging relatives. Now they gotta deal with, you know, aging parents, but they're in one part of the country and they're moving, and they're moving around all over the place. I don't think it's a good or healthy system in the long term. And especially because this simply isn't spoken a lot about at the graduate student level. When you're a grad student in a physics or astronomy program, it is assumed the whole curricula and training and mentorship and advising and everything in your little bubble is gonna assume that you're on a research track for the rest of your life. They're training you to become another scientist, a faculty researcher or a lab researcher. But for 90% of those PhDs, that's not gonna be their life. They, they'll go off in, into industry or government or, or finance, so many other jobs, and I'll talk about that in my next video, they're not going to go into research, but they're not trained to really utilize their skills that they developed in a PhD for physics or astronomy out in the wider world. And I, I guess that's just the way the system is, but I'm not exactly happy with the way the system is. I don't think it's, it's fair. I don't think people going in at the undergrad and graduate level are fully informed about the state of the field and how this profession, how this career trajectory actually works and what your chances are going forward and how your chances actually lower and lower as the years go by, even though you're getting postdoc after postdoc. It feels like you're on this train, it's going somewhere, and then you're done. And this is starting to change. Graduate schools are starting to recognize this, that most of the people in their program are not gonna end up in a long-term career in the sciences, and so start equipping them, preparing them, talking about them, giving them, put it in the brochure. You get a brochure for a graduate school, it's not gonna say, oh, by the way, 90% of you are not gonna be a scientist, but, but come on, join our program anyway. That just doesn't happen. And honestly, I think it should. Or we could all use a lot more money. I mean, that, that's the other, you know, pick one or the other.
Hey, it's me again. I know you just watched a few minutes of me, but who couldn't use a little bit more me? I'm just here to beg you to please subscribe. And if I remember, there's going to be a button like right here uh, where I'm vaguely gesturing. So if you like what you just saw, uh, you'll get more of it if you subscribe. Super easy.